Welcome to Electron Lime. Now let's take a closer look on how we can actually take a force in a moment and turn it into a single force so that that single force represents the action of the force and the action of the moment that it replaced. So here we have at some point, let's call it point O, we have a force acting and we have a moment. Now in the previous video we saw that we took a system of forces and reduced it down to a single force and a moment caused by those forces. So this is what we have right here. But now we're going to take a closer look on how we can actually move that force and have it represent the action of the force and the resulting moment as well. Now, notice that when we move the force from O to O prime, that the direction of the force and the magnitude of the force has to be the same. Otherwise, the effect of the force on the object will be different. So it has to be exactly the same. But you do realize that when you move the force, you will cause a different moment to exist. Now what we're trying to do here is we have an existing moment caused by the existing system of forces that are now replaced by this one force and this moment. And we want to then make it disappear, so to speak. We want to find the equivalent effect of this moved force that will still have this particular moment. And you can imagine, notice that here we have the plane, the two forces here, this force and the force move. The line of action is simply be moved laterally a distance d. Those are in the plane, and the moment is perpendicular to the plane, 90 degrees relative to the plane, so it's sticking out. You can now see that this force will cause a positive moment perpendicular to the plane. So what we want to do then is realize that this moment right here, the moment, must therefore be equal so the moment about point O, I should say, must therefore be equal to the moment caused by this force. Now the way we can find that is we can simply say what is that is equal to the R vector. If we then draw an R vector right here, there's my R vector. We can then say that this moment must therefore be equal to the product of the R vector multiplied times the force. And you can see if you use your right hand rule, you point your fingers in the direction of the R vector, you turn your fingers in the direction of the force, and you can see that you're going to have a moment perpendicular to the plane. So therefore, we can see now that the effect here will be the same as the moment that we have there. So they should be equivalent. Now, what we can also say is that the moment at point O prime, the moment at O prime is going to be equal to the moment at O plus moving the vector over and for that we're going to use the S vector multiplied times the force. Now in this case the F vector has to have the opposite direction because notice that if we move this over the other side R, will, R cross F will not be negative so therefore the direction of S must be opposite the direction of R so therefore I'm going to draw in I need a different color an S vector in this direction, and let's not use blue, I'll use green. All right, so we have an S vector in this direction, there's my S vector, and so you can now see that the moment at this location is equal to the moment at O plus S cross F, and what that means is we can now negate the moment of O by simply moving the vector across like that. Now, the next question is, what is the distance that we have to move vector f over so that it is equal to each other? Well, notice another thing we can do here is we can say that the magnitude of the moment at O, the magnitude of the moment at O is therefore equal to R cross F, the magnitude of that, so that would be equal to the magnitude of R cross F, which is equal to the magnitude of R times the magnitude of F times the sine of the angle between the two. So, let's see here. Let's draw this line a little bit further through. So let's say that this is a line of action like this. But in this particular case, it turns out the way I've drawn it is that this is actually a right angle. So if this is a right angle, then the magnitude of R would be equal to D because the angle here would be 90 degrees. So in this case, we have R times F times the sine of 90 degrees, which is equal to 1. So this is equal to the magnitude of R times F. In this case, the magnitude of R is equal to D. So that means it's equal to D times F. That means that the magnitude of the moment is equal to D times F. That means you have to move the force a distance equivalent to the ratio 
of the moment at all divided by the magnitude of the force. And that is how we find how far you have to move the force laterally in order to have the same effect, the same moment caused by this force as the moment they have represented there at point O. And that's how we can then replace a force and a moment by a single force which has the same effect as the original force and the same moment effect as the moment that you had at point O. And that's how it's done.